Hello. Thank you for coming to Step Music, the first one. Um, I'm very happy to have with me two guys from two of the most successful English language acts to come out of the region. Uh, we have Rami Mustafa, the guitarist from the extreme metal band Nerve Cell. Rami. And we have Nada Mansour, the front man of the Wanton Bishops, who you can watch live later tonight. Big hand. Hello, boys. Hey, what's going on? Not a, don't, don't, um, don't be too formal. Yeah? We're good, right? Is this on? Yes. That's on. Hi. So, um, a little bit of info, if, in case you don't know these guys. Um, Rami plays in a band called Nerve Cell, who are an extreme metal band who have done fantastically well in Europe, uh, especially. They play a bunch of Eastern European festivals, right, every year. And, but they've done this from Dubai with literally, you know, not a lot of industry support, I have to say, um, and been hugely successful. Uh, so big up for Nerve Cell. And Thanks, man. And Nada is uh, in a band from Beirut called the Wanton Bishops, uh, who play Lebanese rock and roll, I believe you're describing it as now, right? Yes, Adam. Yeah. And again, uh, I flew in to Dubai to perform here from the middle of a European tour. Uh, has toured North America, man, been all over. Uh, and again, is doing really well. Uh, check out their new EP. Uh, well, newish. <laughs> Nowhere everywhere. Have a listen, that's uh, Lebanese rock and roll, which is a uh, kind of genre that not is helping to invent or yeah. grow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I didn't man. So, invent it. Um, coming out of the Middle East as an English language artist, I think it's fair to say probably at first you have a kind of uh, nice hook for the media, right? Where they're like, hey, look, the Arabs are playing Western music. And I, I think both of you have probably uh, benefited from that to some extent. Is that fair to say, um, Rami? You know, for me, it uh, started off with the music. I mean, the music is what, what's my main focus. But as much as we, like, the more we tour and the more we get outside, people see that we're a ba Dubai-based band. And they start, like, asking us questions. Like, how come you guys are a metal band from Dubai? And is there a metal scene? And it becomes an, a point of interest, which is really cool, you know? I think I think it did benefit benefit, but at the end, the music gotta be good, and you gotta do the you know you gotta do the the touring and all the all the stuff in between. So sure. that's what matters. And Nada, have you kind of benefited from that at the start? Would you say of the sort of novelty value? Well, we did develop sort of a Stockholm syndrome towards that. At first, it was enjoyable, but then it was uh, it was painful yeah. because you end up being a a story and just a story. I like grew up in Beirut playing blues, what the hell? Well, it happens, you know, get over it at some point and stop, I mean, start asking us questions about the music and not just the story, how about that? So uh, we quickly grew out of it and we started focusing more on the music, but indeed it did help us at first. Yeah, and uh, obviously you're both playing music that is traditionally associated with Western uh, bands, but uh, you've both kind of managed, I think, with both bands to put a, an oriental twist to it, um, a Middle Eastern feel. Can you talk a bit about that? Because um, we'll start with Nada here, because I feel like the first record was, was very much Western uh, music, right? But uh, can you talk a bit about why you wanted, why you felt it was important to introduce the uh, local feel, regional feel? Well, I think that's a, that's a natural process for any Lebanese. And is there any Lebanese in the crowd? All right, we have a bunch over here. I think you know that you're completely clinically insane when it comes to identity. You don't know who you are. I don't know who I am. We're just messed up in that uh, department. So at first, you, you're quite rebellious against your own culture. You just don't want to show it. You just want to conceal it, play anything but uh, Lebanese or Arabic. Uh, you just hide your Arabic heritage of some sort. Then, if you're honest enough with your own self, things start to creep back up, and you just show your true self. I'm both. Yeah. I'm confused, <laughs> but I embrace it. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, presumably made for a music that's more satisfying to you personally now, right? Absolutely. It was, it was quite painful to play three years, the first record, while I have other stuff brewing inside of me. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. And but now I'm happier. Well, it serves you right for getting so many gigs booked. Right? Yeah. Maybe you should have done it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Rami, you've, I think you've managed to introduce kind of an oriental flavor to your yeah, guitar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right? it started like, I, I grew up in a family, like my dad is a musician, my uncle's a musician. They all played Arabic music. But I was never interested in Arabic music myself, you know. I was, I was into more of a, you know, I started guitar playing at what, the age of five. I was a young kid, just wanted to, you know, be rebellious against all the other kinds of music, you know, started like that. But as I grew up, I started noticing that this inf these inf influences started be coming into my playing organically. And in the band, in, in, in Nerf Cell, this sound just started coming out and the fans liked it, you know. It wasn't intentional, uh, not at all, you know. It was just merging with the with the guitar playing itself and the you know the, the guitar solos and stuff like that. We don't have any like in ethnic instruments. There's some metal bands that have eth ethnic instruments, and we were never interested in that, you yeah. know. So I think that's pretty cool, and uh, people like it. People dig it. So we we we, we pushed that a little bit in this upcoming album. We have a new album coming out this year. So there's a more of Oriental touch, in, in this upcoming album. For and sure. again, does that kind of give you a bit more satisfaction as the person who's creating the music? Yeah, you know, like at the end, I mean, metal music is, is more of the playability and, and doing what you like, because it's more of an instrumentation kind of music. Like, you got to be technically good at it. And of course, the fans, like you feed off from the energy of the fans, like any other kind of music. But if the fans likes it, why not, you know? Like, if, if they give you good feedback, especially in the press, and when you go on tour and you meet people on the road and they tell you like, wow, this is like, this sounds like a Arabic scale or a Turkish scale or whatever, you know, like a Middle Eastern scale. That's pretty cool. Something that's unexpected, you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, and do either of you feel that you've had to kind of work harder or be better than the Western bands who are playing similar genres to what you guys perform? Do you feel like you have to prove yourselves more or is it like whatever? When you get to Europe, you're just playing the songs and seeing how That's it works. That's a really good question. Honestly, when we like started the band, I mean, there was no support from anyone. Like, literally, there's zero support except from family, of course. But we we literally built stages, you know, in, in university. So we wanted to do the shows DIY totally. From that onwards, we built a fan base from university in in Dubai, and started playing locally and build that fan base. So. You gotta do it yourself. You gotta start it yourself until you get to the next step. You know, it's it's a it's a gradual kind of thing. You cannot. There's no shortcuts. So, you gotta do the work. And obviously, there's hard work in that. Aside from the music, the, I mean, the music itself is work on, itself, on its own. You know, yeah. and doing the, the the shows. And that's what we focused on: the shows, the live shows. So, and of course, the marketing and everything in between, like PR. You know, do it yourself. I mean, till now, we, we do have a label that we're signed and all that stuff, but we always have a say in what we want because we started like that. Sure. Yeah. I think that goes for both of you. I mean, Nadi, you do a great deal of the booking yourself. Um, well, yeah. not anymore, but it, we, we did that for years now. Uh, but Rami spoke about how hard it was. Yes, it's true, but compared to European bands, we don't have competition, man. We're rock stars in 10 minutes in Beirut. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Everybody is a rock star. And is that, does that turn out to be a bit of a problem after a while? No, it's an advantage. Okay. It's an advantage. I mean, you're, you're, you're the best that your country has immediately. Right. It's ridiculous. So you, you surf on that as well. It, yeah, yeah. it is painful in some, uh, in some you know, extent, but at the same time, you're immediately an export. That's cool. Right. I think it's balanced between us and whatever the Europeans have. They have a lot of infrastructure. We were talking about it with Zahid earlier. They have the whole industry set up, but at the same time, in the same street, they have 10 other bands doing the same thing. Yeah. We don't have that. Yeah, right. True. Yeah, so it's like the uh, big fish, small pond thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. And, and I would like to add one thing. I think it Go depends ahead. on the style of music as well, like, and the country, in the Middle East. Uh, I, be, I believe in Lebanon, it's a little more easier to have to, to perform live in terms in, in other countries. I think so. So yeah. that's a cool thing, you know. And of course, in Dubai, it's the same. But the, 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 I'm talking about the metal scene. It's really small. It's really niche. So to grow that is it's, it's hard work on its own. So to get a fan base, you know. Um, so it really depends on the countries, I think. Because when we travel around like different countries in the Middle East, we notice that there are different fan bases for metal music that are 
bigger or more supportive or the, the platforms are giving more, you know? Yeah. Well, this goes back to one of the earlier panels as well, talking about the uh, importance of kind of collaborating together. The metal scene, to me, seems really tight here, like very supportive. Everyone, uh, you know, backs each other. And in Dubai? Uh, all around the region, man. Oh, in the Middle East? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of metal fans, you know. There's, it's just that they got a... I mean, a few years ago, there was a huge festival in Dubai called De uh, Desert Rock Fest, you know. Yeah. And that festival brought bands from all over the world, you know, like Iron Maiden, Megadeth, all these bands. And then you see tens of thousands of people coming up from all over the region. So that shows there's a lot of fans. It just needs a platform. It needs more of that, more festivals and more bigger shows. I'm thinking more about the artists themselves kind of supporting each other. Right. That's I think, is so important in this region where it's such a tiny scene that there's not a great deal of interest from outside. Has that been important for you guys, like support from your peers, like fellow musicians, I mean? It always seems to me like quite a tight scene. I might be completely wrong. Tell me if I am. Um, <laughs> it's debatable, because <laughs> there, are, there are those who support it, and there's those who just don't care, you know? I mean, and, and I'm, I'm talking about metal, because it's, it's more of a niche kind of, kind of music. Mm -hmm. It's less, uh, less uh, um, accepted, I think. Yeah. So th it's more complex. So uh, there is support, obviously, but I see when, like, the reason why we wanted to, to go out is because we wanted to be in that market where metal is, you know, like Europe, uh, South America, you know, um, Far East Asia. So these are the markets where metal music is. So we, we were embraced there more. So yeah, we, sure. we, we, we were able to tour. We were able to just expose our music more. Okay. Yeah. And Nada, what about in uh, Beirut? Did you feel like... Uh you got a lot of support from peers when you started out? No. No? We still don't do it. It's simple. I, d I don't have an explanation for it. We just, you know, go on our separate paths. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with both of your bands, though, it seems to me, and I think speaking for younger English language artists, of which there are a lot in the UAE, um, the thing that strikes me about the music from both of you guys is that you're not trying to, I don't think you're trying to follow a trend. It seems to be written because you're enjoying it. And I think that's a very important message for the younger artists here, like don't necessarily follow fashion. Can you talk a bit about um, the sort of an initial inspirations for what you were doing and um, the importance of kind of following your, your own path rather than uh, what's expected of you necessarily, Nada? Well, the way I see songwriting in general is a, it's a very selfish process. It starts by you wanting to just, you know, wanting some release, if I can say, of some sort. You're just healing yourself. And if it happens that other people connect with it, that's fantastic. Otherwise, you're just doing it for yourself. So if you follow trends, because you can, a lot of bands out there, are doing great pop, by the way. Yeah. But the definition of pop is trendy, so you gotta keep following it. Um, at some point, you'll be busted, man. <laughs> uh, Remy? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say the same thing, like Nader said, that you follow, you do what you want, but you gotta do the work, you know? And I, I from, from our experience, you know, we've been touring for 10 years, and this is it. You gotta, even if you're good or bad, you become better when you go on the road, because you'll meet so many bands, you'll meet so many people, you meet so many different fans, and, and you, it's, it's very, like, it's a process, you know? There's no shortcuts. I believe that uh, any band who wants to make it, and this kind of, bit, like, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about metal music, there's going to be a lot of sacrifices. Like, we in the band do this for, like, like a livelihood. Like, we tour, like, for this, so we we're always on the road, and we do other side things, like, side businesses and stuff, but you gotta sacrifice with a lot of things. Yeah. So if you're ready for the sacrifice for metal music, because in metal music also the, 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 the commercial success is hit and miss, you know? Right. And it's yeah. not meant to be, you know, because metal music is more of, of what you wanna do, what you wanna play, you know? Sure. So. Okay. Um, and uh, how long did it take either of you before you, you were able to make a living kind of full time off this, off the music? Like how long were you going before you were like, oh, okay, I can quit the day job and make a living off this? In my case, I had to do it early on. And uh, 
Because there's a lot to do. In the beginning, you're doing at least 70 or 80% of business and 30% of music, which is quite frustrating. So you don't have time to do something else. Right. Yeah. The other cats in the band, they were able to work, to have day jobs. And they just left them a year or two years ago. Okay. But for me, it was from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Remy? Yeah, I think there's a lot of frustration balancing the business side and the music side. Because in, in our case, in, in Nerve Cell, we do that. We have to balance it and we have to give it like an equal portion because the music is so important and the other stuff, you know, the marketing and touring, like I'm just keep saying touring because it's an essential thing in this kind of, this kind of music. Um, but I also believe that at some point, and we, we reach this point that you gotta give the, you gotta have a good team, you know? You gotta have some people you trust who will book you shows, you gotta have people kind of manage you, but not fully, because I don't believe in full management for bands. Right. Because th th that will eventually take away the, the creative control at one point. So management is good. So I think, I think you gotta balance it equally. Do you agree with Rami there, Nada, about the management? Do you think full management would be a problem for you guys? I, I, Only I, when you can't manage yourself. Only when yeah. you become to a level that you have to do a lot, you know? When you tour eight months a year, for example. Yeah. I mean, I let them do the, what we call the day-to-day, but the big strategic stuff is always a decision. Uh, creative, nobody even ever dares to trespass. Right. I'm a dictator when it comes to that. Right. And I micromanage everything anyhow. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Can't delegate. All right. uh, how hard was it for you guys to initially find any structure like, in place to help you? Uh, like, is Beirut slightly better than the UAE for that or not? Not really. I mean, radio, when it comes to industry, no. Radios are playing top 40. Um, just recently, just recently, we uh, attracted the interest of brands who can splash some money. Yeah. Much needed for touring. Probably Rami knows half of tours are, are deficient. I don't know, you're, you're negative totally. in most touring. This, is, this could be a different total, like different panel <laughs> to discuss, but it's, it's kind of true, of course. Uh, I mean, just this year we started to break even on touring in some territories, not all territories. I mean, we're not going to go into uh, detail. If it's not for the fun, you know, the process of traveling, seeing different countries, hanging out in different cities, meeting new people, then it's not, sometimes it's depressing, you know. Yeah. But in the end, you break even, you're good, you know, you're happy. I mean, we, you start now doing, having partners in each territory that'll do the PR for you, that'll do the attract the journalists and everything. So things start to pick up, but initially you got to make sure that for the first two or three years you're touring negative. I think right. sometimes more. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically you've got to be very willing to take a big hit economically before oh, yeah. you even consider doing this. I mean, right? look, man, I'm 33 and I'm, I just got out of being broke. Okay. <laughs> Guys, does anyone... Uh, does anyone want to ask any questions? We only have like a minute and a half. If anyone has any questions for these guys? Ali? Yeah, just grab my mic, man. Um, a question for both of you, actually. Um, you mentioned how the kind of the, especially when we're talking about the topic of uh, how uh, your English speaking uh, uh, language in terms of your music, but it seems from your answers now that you don't want ambition. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, man. <clears throat> in terms of uh, your style and infusing elements of like uh, local uh, sounds, you both mentioned that, but how important it is for it to be organic instead of being, having or feeling pressure because you're coming from the region of having to uh, infuse those sounds? Uh, whether it's the oriental element or other elements, it has to be organic, otherwise you're fooling yourself and you'll, you know, Imagine, you're going to be playing this for the next two or three years every single night. At some point, you'll shoot yourself in the left ball. And there's a thin line between being cheesy and not. So you've got to be careful. You know, because in any, any style of music, when you want to add ethnic parts, it has to be very balanced. Else, you know, the crowd is just going to think it's cheesy. I mean, that's, that's a word to... That's, that's what I think. Uh, does anyone else have anything to ask? If not, we're good. Thank you so much, guys. Nada, Thanks, Rami. Thank you. Cheers. Big hand for them. Thank you for coming.